Praise God, everybody. Praise God, everybody. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. That's saying I just want to praise you. Just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done, done for me. Blessings and glory and I Jesus for blessing me. Let's sing it one more time. I just want to thank you. Just want to thank you forever, forever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever for all you've done, done for me. Blessings and glory. Blessings and glory. And I Blessings and glory, and glory, and honor, and honor. They all, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. I just wanna thank you forever, forever, and ever, and ever. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Blessings and glory, 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 blessings and glory.
Aleluia. Good evening, Mount Olive Cathedral family and friends. I am Reverend Gwendolyn Hill Henderson, and I will be your worship leader this evening. Let us put our hands together for the Mount Olive Cathedral ministry. Amen, amen. I will praise you, O oh Lord my God, with all of my heart. I will glorify your name forever. Let us pray. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, the earth is full of your glory. We humbly come before you, dear God, in the name of your Son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask that you come afresh into the depths of our being and speak your will to us today and throughout this hour. Lord, it is through the power and the blood of the pure blood of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit that we have been given spiritual gifts. Your word says, oh God, that we are to be like good stewards of your manifold grace, serving one another with whatever gift each of us had received. So stir up the gifts, dear God, that we may operate fully as the body of Christ here in Mount Olive Cathedral. And now, God, we thank you for our leader of this wonderful church, Pastor Lester. God, we thank you for his kindness. We thank you for his endurance. We thank you, God, for his work for the people of God. We ask that you meet him at his point of need, dear God, and that you continue, Lord, to, to bless him, dear Lord, as he cares for the people. God, right now we ask that you put upon a special anointing for the speaker for the hour, Reverend Letha Reed. We thank you, God, for her humility and her obedience. Remind her, God, that she is the daughter of the Almighty God, that she is the head and not the tail, dear God. We also thank you for the preparation that she has done for your people. She's done this preparation in a new way, dear God. So bless her. God, we pray that with her preached word that you will meet the needs of each person that is listening today. Remind us that there's no guilt or shame that we cannot overcome, that there's no mistake that you cannot correct, and there's no hurt that heaven cannot heal. We bless you, O oh God. You get the glory. All we ask is for the blessing. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The scripture reading today is taken from John 11, 1 through 15, and it reads, Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sisters sent him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. And then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, 
Lately, the Jews sought to stone you, and are you going there again? And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of the world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after he said them, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go and I make wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought he was speaking about taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. The word of God for the people of God. Bless the Lord and the Lord's word. And now I have the pleasure of introducing the best pastor in Mount Olive Cathedral in Memphis, Tennessee, the pastor Reverend, Je Reverend Paris Lester. I had the pleasure in January uh, through a divine um, providence to have met Pastor the first Sunday in January of this year. And in that meeting, Pastor Lester and I talked and with his kindness and his open heart, he was willing to invite me to share the pulpit area and to share my gifts with the church. That's the kind of pastor he is. He didn't interrogate me. He didn't take me through an, an, an exam. He accepted me. And since then, I have grown, and I bless God for him and his kindness and his leadership. It is this pastor who will introduce the great preacher for the hour. Give it up, everybody, for the best pastor in Memphis, Tennessee the Reverend Paris J. Lester. Thank you so much. Let's give God praise for the Reverend Gwendolyn Henderson, amen, who we thank and praise God for her being here on today. Thank you all for who've joined us on Facebook Live and those who are here today. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And we're so excited and delighted that you have joined us. We do ask that you would continue to keep in your prayers of the family of Sister uh, Gertie Mullen. Uh, our homegoing celebration will be this coming Saturday. This coming Saturday, 12 noon. You can watch it on Facebook Live at Mount Island Cathedral. But we want to keep Sister Sherelle and Thomas Sherelle Thomas and family lifting our prayers, but continue to lift up the family of Sister Gertie Mullen. Her homegoing celebration will be on this coming Saturday, 12 noon. <clears throat> also, we know that we've got Mother's Day coming up, and we look forward to lifting up our mothers on this coming Sunday for Mother's Day. If you have not had a chance, please email a picture of your mother to our very own Sister Georgia and Spite so that we can lift up all of the moms of the MOC. The moms of the MOC, we want to make sure you turn, get those pictures in to Sister Spike this week. We need them by Friday so that we can work on a collage that we plan to share on Facebook as we lift up our moms during this pandemic. <clears throat> Continue to be in prayer for <clears throat> Brother Charles Russian uh, and his daughter in a special way. We continue to keep them in our prayers. We pray especially again today for Brother Harvey McKinney Sr. and also for Brother Charles Reed. We do know that God is a healer 
and we trust and know that God will continue to take care of them. It indeed is my honor and privilege today as we celebrate this week, this week of educators, Teachers Week. Can we give God praise for all of our educators? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for our educators. <clears throat> Whatever we learn, somebody taught us. Amen. So we thank God for our educators this week, whom we lift up and celebrate. I thank God for my mother, Rule, uh, Lester Andrews, who was my first teacher. Amen. And thank God for all of the educators those who are still teaching and those who are retired, we thank God for the legacy of all of our educators. We give God praise for all of our educators. They mean so much to us. We recognize the importance of having our educators. And in the words of our bishop, with the one church, one school, we value life and value learning because of great educators. It indeed is my honor and privilege tonight to present an educator one who's an educator, but also a gospel preacher. She hails from the great city of Memphis, Tennessee, and a proud graduate of Booker T. Washington, then a proud graduate of Lane College, amen. And she's also have served in the United States Army. She's a grateful woman. We're thankful for her. Uh, we thank God for her son and daughter and all of her grandchildren who rise up and call her blessed for her siblings, her mother, and she just celebrated a birthday this uh, May, amen, a special birthday that we're celebrating with her. So we count it a privilege and an honor to have with us kicking off this preaching series of these preaching ladies. We have none other than our very own, the Reverend Letha Reed. So we're thankful and grateful. She will come after a selection from our singing uh, music ministry here at Mount Olive, the next voice will be that of our preacher teacher, the Reverend Letha Reed. I will, would you repeat after me? Reverend Reed. Reverend Reed. Preach, the Preach, the Preach the word. Reverend Reed. Preach the word. Reverend Reed. Preach the word. Come on and give praise, God praise for this music ministry. And the next voice will be that of the Reverend Letha Reed of Mount Olive Cathedral. Come on, y'all sing with us. I'm looking.
to allow God to use me tonight. Pastor Lester, our pastor of Mount Olive Cathedral, CME Church, and the elder of the Northeast District, Pastor Paris J. Lester I. I count it an honor and a privilege. And he knows me better than I thought he did. <laughs> Thank you for that introduction. He was not reading from a paper. So he's gotten to know me very well. Let us pray. Lord, we bless you this day, May the 6th. And we give you all the praise and glory for waking us up today. Please allow your word to fall fresh upon those who are inclined to hear the word of God. Take Letha out of the way, O oh Lord, and allow the Holy Spirit to have its way. Allow the Holy Spirit to send an anointing upon these words and bring them to life. We ask these things in our son Jesus' name. Amen. The scripture was read earlier, John, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 15. This is the parable of Lazarus. It's quite a long <coughs> scripture reading. Goes all the way to verse 45. No, I'm not doing those. So I want to place emphasis on verses 25 and 26 and verses 39 through 40. We've all heard them before. I will read now. John, the 11th chapter verses 11, uh, verses 25 and 26. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever, whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Verses 39 and 40, Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? I'm going to focus on Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you will see the glory of God, the word of God for the people of God. Praise be 
to God. My title for today is From Existing to Living. Let me say that again, from existing to living. Are you living or are you just dead? Let me say, or let me say that again. Are you living, and I'm gonna not say dead, I'm say, I, or are you just existing? Some people get up each day and they're spiritually dead. They have lost their faith in God or they never had a relationship with him in the first place. Day in and day out, they're just going through the motion. God may be allowing us to go through a spiritual death so that he can show up and show that he is still God. He has all power, and if we believe, then he gives us the power to do things we cannot even conceive. Even with this pandemic, the word in itself suggests pandemonium. He is giving us all power. He is giving us a vision, a new vision, a K-N-E-W vision that you have to con discern for yourselves, not to just go out there because someone tells you to. The plague is not over. Now, John chapter 11, Verses 1 through 45 tells us the parable of Lazarus. Many of you know the story, but I'm going to give you some background information. <coughs> Lazarus was the brother of Mary and Martha, the Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair. Now Jesus heard that Lazarus was sick. Jesus loved Mary and Martha and Lazarus, but when he heard he was sick, John 11 and 4 says, Jesus said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. I, I'm going to say that again, because we must be talking about coronavirus. Uh-huh. This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now you see, Jesus did not go to Lazarus right away. He stayed where he was for more than two days, after which he went to Judea again. Now the significance of him going again is that he faced the threat of being stoned by the Jews. The disciples voiced their concern about his well-being to Jesus. How many of you have gone to places where you know you should not have gone? Oh, Lord. How many of you would be brave enough to venture to a place where you knew danger was lurking? They're telling us danger is lurking right here. But we're right here because we're no, we know that we're covered in the blood. When you know that you know God is by your side, then you're not afraid to go into the unknown. And as I continued this parable, the disciples wanted to know if Jesus was going to Judea again. Verse 9 tells us that Jesus answered and said, Are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if he walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. He told the disciples, our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I go that I may wake him up. Now Jesus knew that Lazarus was already dead. How many of you here today are dead, spiritually dead? You're just merely going through the motions. You get up again day in and day out and the quarantine has just made it easier we just get up some of us are not even putting on clothes and when you may have your pajamas on you may have your gown on you may have that house dress on but you are spiritually dead 
you're feeling bogged down with problems, you're spiritually dead. If you complain each and every day about this and that, you are spiritually dead. If everyone around you seems to be happy, but you're always sad and depressed, you are spiritually dead. You have to turn all your problems over to God. Raise your hands where you are at home and say, let go and let God. I can just feel your spirit now. Just raise your hands. Put them up. That's a little exercise for you too tonight. And raise your hands and say, let go and let God. Say, I want to live. I want to live, Lord. I want you to know today that when we acknowledge God and recognize all power is his, we will begin living. God wants us to live life and live it abundantly. Back to our scripture. Now when Jesus spoke of Lazarus being asleep, he knew he was already dead. So Jesus spoke again to the, the disciples and told them, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sake that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. What Jesus meant is that if he was there at the time of Lazarus' death, the, the disciples may not have believed that he had really died. So Jesus deliberately waited. He wanted to make sure he was definitely gone. However, when Jesus got to Judea, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb, his grave, for four days. By then, Lazarus' body had an odor coming from it. Now, to paraphrase the scriptures in between, there was a connection with Jesus and Lazarus' sisters. They felt that Jesus, if Jesus had been there, Lazarus would not have died. He would not have died. But remember, earlier in verse 4, Jesus had already stated, this sickness is not unto death but for the glory of God. We have to remember that during this season of quarantine, during this pandemic, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. You see, sometimes God has to sit us down. He has to put us in a place where we have to be still. He has to put us in a place where we have to be quiet. Because some of us are so busy, we're constantly running from here and there and everywhere that we never have time to listen to God. So you see, this, 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 this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. You see, if no one ever died, if there were no sickness, if you didn't have days where you had to fall on your knees and say, Father, help me, then you would not truly know the power of God. For John 11, 25 through 26 says, Jesus says to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Well, I'm able to bring this forward. So you see, Martha and her sister Mary, they secretly followed Jesus to the tomb. Mary said the same thing to Jesus about Lazarus, and that is Lazarus would be dead if you had been here. Her friends who were mourning with her started talking about Jesus. They wanted to know if he loved Lazarus so much, and if he had performed all of these other miracles, then why did he not save Lazarus? You may have asked God the same question. Why am I sick? Why is this pandemic touching the world? 
Why didn't I get the promotion? Why do I have to get up and go to work every single day? Well, guess what? He fixed it so you didn't have to go. If you are living, then the answer is, it is for the glory of God. You will always be unhappy if you're trying to please man. Church, I want you to know that while the people were yet weeping and mourning for Lazarus, verse 39 tells us, Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time, there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. But you see, God started praying. He started praying to his heavenly father because he always hears us. You see, God never pushes the decline button. He would never put you on hold or send you to a pre-recorded message nor will he send you to a text message that says TTYL, talk to you later. What Jesus said is Lazarus, come forth. Loose him and let him go. You see, we need to loose some of the things that we're holding on to. We need to loose this excess waste. Wait, I say to you today, loose these things that are keeping you spiritually dead. Let it go, let it go, and let God. Awake from your status of just simply existing. Live, live for Christ today. He said, I have come so that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Here are some tips to help you live. As we're facing this plague together, remember 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. As I close today, I want you to think about the word quarantine. As I use it as an acronym, and I'm not the author of this acronym, the author is unknown, but being Letha Reed, I had to put my flavor on it too. So the word quarantine, let me give you some tips on how you live during this quarantine. The Q, quiet your soul. Meditate on God's word and promises. Quiet, quiet your soul. The U, unite as one with God. Grow and nourish your relationship with God. A, act with godly love. How can we do that, Pastor? Well, I'm glad you asked. Have you checked on a neighbor? Have you checked on your own family members? Have you fed anyone? Have you called some church members? Get out of that, get that directory out now. It's just not up to the pastors to call everybody. We have hundreds of members. If you would just call two or three a day, two or three a day, each one will what? Reach one. So unite with God. Grow and nourish your relationship with God. Act with godly love. The R, read your Bible. Read your Bible. Read your scriptures. And when you finish reading that Bible, read a book. Read to your grandchildren. Read out loud to yourself. If it's quiet in there, just read out loud. I like to read the scriptures out loud. Sometimes I put it on the speaker and just let them read to me. It's soothing. It'll calm your nerves. A, activate your faith. N, nourish your soul. Nourish your soul. Coronavirus may kill the physical body, but sin, let me say that again, but sin will kill your soul. Coronavirus will kill the physical body, but sin will kill your soul. And the T, I mean the I, no, I'm getting ahead of myself, I'm a little nervous. That's all right, let me slow down. Spelling like some of my kids on their text messages. 
T, talk with God. You are not in this alone. God is always with you. I, intercede for others. Pray for our politicians. Pray for our family members. Pray for our friends. Pray for the pastors. And pray for the world. In nestle. Let, let, let's, let's get comfortable. Nestle. He will give you comfort. Nestle in the presence of God. Find comfort in God's love. E. Elevate God in worship. It's not about us, but it's all about him. I'm going to close with verse 40. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. I want you to know tonight that you're not in this alone. That if you just believe, we're going to get through this. This too shall pass. If you just believe, just have a mustard seed worth of faith, you will see the glory of God. Let us pray. Father God, help us to live. Please lift this plague from us. In a world that depends on science more than you, God, dazzle us with your majesty. Help us to turn from our wicked ways, Lord, and all things acknowledge you as our Lord and Savior. Thank you for revealing yourself, for giving us eyes to see. Please continue to improve our spiritual vision that we may see more clearly. Create in us, I said create in us, a new spirit. K-N-E-W, that we would have the knowledge, Lord, the gift of discernment to see. And Lord, we'll be ever so careful to give you the glory and to give you the honor and to give you the highest praise, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Come on, we give God praise for such a mighty word that we're not just existing, but we're living. The Bible says that it's in Jesus, it's in him that we live, move, and have our being. So tonight as that word has gone forth, a reminder to all of us that we're not just existing, but we're living. Paul writes to Timothy said that God gives us a lively hope. Because there are people who are living, but they're still on ventilators. There are people who are still living, but they're incarcerated. But a lively. And I'm able to go where I want to go. I have freedom. God has given us eternal and abundant life. Thank God tonight for the Reverend Letha Reed. Tonight, I want to extend you that invitation even at your home tonight to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Maybe you feel like you've just been existing. Tonight, I want you to know you can live. Maybe you feel like you've been frustrated, you've been tired dealing with all of the things that Corona has brought on. Some of us are tired of Zoom meetings and conference calls and all of that. But I'm thankful to God that he still keeps us. He still blesses us. That even in the midst of a pandemic, we can still praise him. Hallelujah. So if you have not, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ, tonight can be your night that you start living, no longer existing, but live in Christ Jesus. Romans 10 and 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, it says you shall be saved. So I invite you tonight 
to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, to accept him, let him lead, guide, and direct you. As our music ministry begins to minister, we want to thank God tonight for that word tonight. Hallelujah. And I want you to work in me. Let him work inside of you. I see you work in us. Let God come into your life. And I want you to work. Surrender to his will. I see. I see you work. Tonight can be your night. Hallelujah. And I want you to work. Thank him tonight. In me. Praise him tonight. I see. I see you work. Thank you, Lord. In us. Thank you, Lord. And I want you to work in me. Oh, thank you, Lord. I see you work in us. And I want you. And I want you to work in me. Come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. Come on and give God praise tonight. We stepped out on faith tonight. That word went forth tonight to transform us, to renew us on tonight. To accept Jesus Christ. That we are no longer existing but we are living. Come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. Anybody going to praise God that we're still living? Come on and give him praise that you're still living. Could have been dead sleeping in your grave, but still living. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God that we're still, we're still living. Somebody say, I'm still living. I'm still living. In this pandemic, I'm still living. In Corona, I'm still living. Maybe tough, but I'm still living. The road gets rough, but I'm still living. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm still living. I'm still living. I'm still here. The devil thought he had me, but thank God. We're still living. Somebody give a praise that we're still living tonight. Oh, what a mighty word tonight. Hallelujah tonight. I feel all right tonight. Come on, we can give him some real praise. That word says that I'm still living. Somebody going to touch their neighbor. Somebody going to touch themselves and say, I'm still living. I'm still living. I'm still living. I'm still living. Thank God tonight. We are off to an awesome start. These preaching ladies this month for the month of May. We lift up our educators this month. And we also are lifting up our nurses, amen? Two very essential workers, our educators and our nurses. We're lifting them up also as we lift up Nurses Week. Now, we want you to join us on this coming Sunday at 1030 a.m. Facebook Live again from Mount Olive Cathedral. We also want you to go to YouTube. Type in Mount Olive Cathedral CME Church. And then hit subscribe. We want you to subscribe to our channel. We're looking forward to you being with us. Now on next Wednesday, next Wednesday we will be back here at 7 o'clock as we continue this preaching series of our ladies. And our worship leader who led us tonight will be our preacher, the Reverend Gwendolyn Henderson. Amen. So we're looking for a mighty word from these preaching sisters We're looking to God to bless us with Reverend Gwendolyn Henderson on next Wednesday. But please join us. If you want to continue to support our ministry, we do uh, solicit your support. You could go on Cash App, the dollar symbol, M-O-C-C-M-E. That's M-O-C-C-M-E, Mount Olive Cathedral, C-M-E. Also on Giblify at Mount Olive Cathedral. You could also go on PayPal at Mount Olive Cathedral. And also you can mail it in at 538 Dr. M. L. King Jr. Avenue, Memphis, Tennessee, 38126. We're grateful and thankful that you join us here at the MOC CME here in Memphis, Tennessee. As we get ready to go, we're thankful and grateful to God for the Reverend Letha Reed. She gets ready to close us out 
with prayer. Amen. Come on, give God praise now for Reverend Letha Reed. Father God, as we go out now, we ask that you watch and protect over us, Lord. We ask that you keep us covered, Lord, that the pestilence will pass over us, O oh Lord. We ask that you touch each and every one under the sounds of our voice and those who are not here today, Lord. Ask that you comfort those that are in the hospital, those who are incarcerated, Lord, that you make your grace to find, shine down upon them, Lord, your face to shine upon them, Lord, as we go forth. We ask that you touch each and every one, that you keep us protected, Lord. These and other blessings we ask in thy son Jesus' name. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever be blessed. Amen. Amen. Oh.